So in the last tutorial, we went over um, uh, the new temporal oscillator. And um, a module I like to use most with the new temporal oscillator are the wave multipliers. Um, so I'm going to be going over the wave multiplier today. Uh, yeah, so what are wave multipliers? Wave multipliers are wave folders. So I don't know why it's called multiplying. I guess you're multiplying the amount of waves per wave in a way but visually it makes more sense for me to call it a wave folder, so I've been calling them wave folders because uh, it, it folds the wave. So we are going to look at the sine wave through the wave multiplier. So now you're on the oscilloscope, you're looking at the sine wave by itself. Um, and with these knobs on the wave multiplier closed, um, uh, you will see not much of a difference. So we're gonna go into our wave multiplier, out of our wave multiplier, into the mixer, and then um, change our scope to the output of the wave multiplier instead of the sine, sine wave. So the wave multiplier has uh, two inputs, one output and a, um, and a CV input to control the amount of wave multiplying. Uh, I'm gonna make this a little bigger because we do lose some, some voltage um, range. So it's bigger on the scope for you, so you can see it. Um, so yeah, what does a wave multiplier do and sound like? Here's our sine wave. As we bring up the wave multiplier knob, you will start to see the sine wave fold in on the top and bottom. And then as you move that knob, as you sweep that knob, it will um, it'll change, it'll fold more, etc. And add uh, upper harmonics and upper octaves to the sine wave. So that is your, and that was really loud in here. But that, um, that's what a wave folder does. And it sound, sounds different, sounds different for different uh, waveforms. So with the triangle, you'll see it fold in at those peaks of the triangle. For the saw wave, um, for saw wave, it will it will sort of multiply it linearly because it doesn't have really a peak to fold on because um, the saw has a hard edge on one side, so you'll see what that looks like. It sort of inverts it. And you'll see it start to build sine waves in between the saws. That's one sine wave. sounds really cool on saw. Um, uh, with the pulse wave, it will, it'll sort of also add it linearly in a way. First, it doesn't really have anything to fold on, so it will just invert it. Um, and then you'll see what that happens, what that sounds like when uh, it has more waves. So that might be something to control more at audio rate because the sound is sort of consistent, but it has those sort of in-between things. So let's say I bring in um, another uh, slope generator to control that control voltage, and that's just like a slow moving up and down thing that we're gonna be using to control that uh, this knob with the CV input. So we're gonna take our pulse. Take our slope generator.
so now I'm controlling I'm controlling the CV input at audio rate at like a fast sine wave basically. And I can do that again showing you what and I can do that again showing you uh, on the blue trace the, the control voltage that I'm using so you can see what's actually happening. Um, so the control voltage again is controlling um, it's an up and down slope that I'm controlling the speed of with the rise and fall time. And we'll get to the slope generators in another video. Um, uh, that's controlling the, the how much of the wave I'm folding uh, of this pulse wave. So I'm going to go into the other blue trace. You see that going up and down over there. So it goes up, folds, goes back down. And then as I make that faster, so now you see that it's a little hard to see, but now you see that triangle wave in the background, that's what's controlling our, our oscillator. And that's happening at audio rate, so if I change the sort of size of this, the range, which doesn't really help. Change the range of this back to, now you can sort of see our triangle in the background over there. If I just switch these, so now our green trace is that sine wave. Sorry, this tripod's super wobbly. So now if I switch these, the green trace is our, is our triangle wave that's controlling the rate. Yeah, that's a much more clear idea of what's happening. So you see when the when the triangle wave is up, um, the, the saws are further apart from each other. When it's closer, the saws are closer to each other, and that's just the, the nature of um, Waveforms that are higher frequency are closer to each other, and waveforms that are lower frequency are farther apart from each other. So it creates that waveform um, and makes that sound. And we can add to that with this knob, so the range is shorter. So now it's just the top, and now you sort of get a little bit of it. That sounds like with something like the triangle wave, which is much more foldable. And that's sort of how people get like sort of glassy sort of tones of wave folding. Really sort of wet sounds. We get even wetter sounds from the sine wave. And then, um, so there are different sections. Uh, I'm gonna take this out, the scope here. There are different sections to this wave folder. Um, uh, the section I just showed you, the middle section here, folds the top and the bottom of the waveform. Um, the section below only folds the bottom. So if we go in on the bottom section, out on the bottom section, same thing with our sine wave. It already sounds like it's up in harmonics, um, just because of the the input to it. So um, this is what the bottom section sounds like folding just the bottom of the waveform. And I'm gonna switch this back to the green so you can see it better. 
Should put this tripod on something else just so it's not as wobbly. Okay, so now we're looking at the um, the sine wave through the bottom section of the wave folder. Um, and this is what that looks like when you fold that. Now it's up a harmonic and that bottom section's folded in. darker sound than folding the top and bottom. That's top and bottom, and then this is just bottom. Now if we look at the top section over here, um, all the way up top here, I'm not entirely sure what this does, but uh, you can see with going in and out, we get no signal with this knob all the way down. And then as we bring the knob, we get our sine wave. Um, same with triangle. Or it actually, it, so it makes the triangle into a sine wave too. It rounds that out. Um, softens our saw a little bit. Um, And our pulse is pretty much where it is. And with the switch at low, does that with the sine wave? Kind of boost that sine wave. Um, sort of have it at full at normal sine wave, then we can get it boosted. Um, triangle also sort of boosts it. Also boost the saw, and then with our pulse. And we're, we have CV over this, so we could probably use it as a, um, a sort of um, VCA. Um, and what a VCA is, we can go over VCAs this um, in this video. So VCAs are, just because this is a good example of how to use a VCA, VCA is a voltage controlled amplifier. So um, it means that you can control the amplitude or volume of anything with control voltage, like it's a voltage using voltage to control the volume of a certain thing. Um, and because this knob controls the volume of our pulse and has a control voltage input above it, um, it can be acted as a VCA. So if I have um, our same slope generator from before that I'll show on the other blue trace, see that in the background, you can barely see it going up and down. Um, I'll just have that signal uh, go into uh, this jack, this white jack up here. So it's opening and closing. And you can see when it's sort of at the audio rate what it does to the waveform. And this is called amplitude modulation, which is just sort of sort of controlling the volume at an audio rate of a signal. An audio rate is just anything that you can, any oscillator that's at a rate that you can hear. Um, you can kind of sort of get phaser sounds that way. This is with the triangle, sine, saw. It's kind of a saw against saw now. sounds that way. You know, to our 
more variable. I'm sort of getting upper harmonics and the lower, sort of mixing both of these signals together now, both the oscillator and what I'm using to modulate it. It's like a chord happening now. that's modulating it is controlling the rise and fall times, which um, sort of in turn controls the frequency of the oscillator. It can go from that slower rate, which is that slow up and down, to audio rate, which is um, like an oscillator rate that we're hearing um, that will sort of modulate that. Um, yeah, so that's what the, the wave multipliers do. Um, another really fun module to play around with other oscillators. Um, and you get a lot of um, timbral and, uh, and harmonic content um, to play around with um, with the wave multipliers. So yeah, and we will talk about uh, the slope generator in the next video. Um, it's also a simple module, but um, very useful for modulation, especially in the surge modular synthesizer.